Okay, so now we're going to – we have time for one last question. I had a list here. Obviously, you knew that I would want to ask you about a number of things, including the Timna discovery. Uh, that was just a, a few months ago or a few yeah. weeks ago. It was in the a few weeks ago. But, yep. but I want to ask something that's more practical that was just sent in and saying that I realized, oh, yeah, I should have asked that right at the beginning. Uh, so originally, Rav Herzog was able to get royal purple. And then uh, Dr. Elsner found you add the sunlight and it turns blue. And considering that you're dealing with two molecules that are very similar to each other and it's in the solution and it's about the sunlight, I would imagine that there's actually a whole spectrum of colors in between what you were showed me before, the very sky blue, beautiful blue, and this royal purple. They, they are, there is, uh, there's not exactly one f black line between the two, and there's probably a spectrum of colors you could get there. When do you say that a sample, let's say it wasn't sunny enough, although uh, you, you mentioned to me beforehand that you try to go and produce this, where you will have sunlight pretty much most of the year without fail. Let's say someone does not die so perfectly. Now it is a shad, uh, no, a tad to the shade shad, a tad uh, of the shade of purple. How do you know once it's uh, no longer tailless and, and purple? You do a chemical test on it or you say that, oh, it's good enough for have a child look at it just like uh, uh, two hours before we went online. We had a, a, a Megillah here where a Lamid had its head detached. So now it looks like a cuff. And uh, the usual test is ask a child who can read. Is that a lamid or a cuff over there? So how, how, where do you draw the line? Well, look, uh, the truth is uh, there's only one halachic statement that's a clearly halachic statement in all of the Talmud regarding Tchelet. It's okay. a Tchelet has to come from a chilazon. It's the same statement in the positive and the negative. It's got to come from, from a chilazon. And it can only come from a chila zone, and 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 if it doesn't come from a chila zone, it's not it's not acceptable. The color, the exact color, is never mentioned in the Talmud, uh, and the, the the Talmud knows how to deal with colors when it when it wants to, um, which leads me to believe, and I think a lot of people believe this, that it was difficult to make tchelit. You got it; it came from the snail. You were very very happy with whatever you you got. If it was a little bit lighter or a little bit darker or a little bit more purple, a little bit less purple, it would all be great and it would all be kosher and you would be very, very happy to wear it to shul. Okay. Um, but nonetheless, we do have a kind of perception and here I think it's it's quite subjective and it's um, uh, and it's the way, again, uh, when we have these kinds of questions, we ask Rabbi Tevger, Rabbi Elio Tevger, um, we're trying to get sky blue. If it starts to look a little bit too purple to us, we'll we'll put it aside, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and it's really just something that we we have a our own you know kind of as I said subjective definition of, but uh, uh, but that's basically uh, the way the way we do it. So what do you and do with all those rejects? There aren't many rejects. Okay, good. Uh, that subsequent to Professor Elsner. We have found that there are a number of other ways to uh, get the blue out of the snail and not just uh, and not just purple. The most effective way and the most efficient way is sunlight, and that's still what we use. But we've also noticed that if you dye with uh, and you get a little bit of a shade of purple, right? If you take it right away, right away, not after a couple of not after a half hour or so, but right away, if you put it in very very hot water then that uh, purple will turn to blue. Mm -hmm. So since part of the process of actually making the strings is to boil the strings that sets the wool so that they don't unravel, we hardly ever at the end of the process get purple. In fact, even if we try to keep it a little bit purple, we don't, uh, uh, it, it's pretty hard to find. If you wanted to get purple, you would dye it with purple with and own, keep it dark and then you would let it dry for a couple of hours at least, and only then you would start to work with it. So these are some of the tricks of the trade that we've found over the uh, over the years. What we've discovered, we're quite sure that the ancient dyers would have discovered. So uh, we're not any smarter at all. In fact, we feel humbled when we find these fabrics. You know, they're very rare to find. But you look at these fabrics and the technology that existed 2,000 years ago, in Timna's case, 3,000 years ago in the time of 
King David and King Solomon, they were already playing with purple here in Eretz Israel. Uh, I mean, this is really incredible, and we are part of this long, long tradition of dyers, and more importantly, long, long tradition of trelet dyers and people who wear trelet. And uh, I can't tell you how proud and what a great sechus it, it is for me to be part of that ancient tradition of people who were make, making trelet for Am Yisrael, so that everybody could wear on their on uh, on their garments this uh, this. Literally beautiful mitzvah. I mean, a lot of mitzvahs are beautiful. This is really, by every definition, a beautiful, beautiful mitzvah that makes you feel special every time and every morning that you look at the tzitzit and you kiss them. 